every single one. Even though we're alive. Hey guys, hey, yeah. how's it going? Hey. <laughs> All right, so, uh, hey everyone, uh, we're Trendy Entertainment. I have myself here, I'm PM Master, I'm our marketing director, and we have J20, <laughs> Senior Game Designer. How's it going? Sorry, I like to let people introduce themselves. So, uh, today we have a fun a fun show for you. Uh, it's always good when we have one of our designers here because they can answer all of your questions way more eloquently than I can. Oh, we're going to try. Yeah, and they <laughs> said for the YouTube video that they want you to look into oh. the... Uh, okay. Yeah, don't look, even though we like looking there. Look okay. Here. So I will say the one special thing we have for you today is uh, you can actually see our 3D artist, Dan Pinkson, uh, kind of modeling and texturing one of the NPCs that are going to be in the game soon. Uh, this NPC does have something to do with pets. I'm not going to spoil what <laughs> exactly they have to do with pets, but you might be able to guess. So please enjoy watching him uh, work on that while we have fun kind of talking to you guys. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what are we going to... We have these questions. But well, yeah, we have a whole bunch. But before these, I think there's a couple things we want to talk to them about in sure. an upcoming patch. Okay. Uh, the ability rebalance right. and hard mode. So where sure. do you want to start? Um, well, let's just start with hard because I've actually just spent most of the day playtesting that stuff. Wait, wait, wait. So. I forgot when I made a CR cells, I covered up the chat. So I need them. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have no clue what people are saying, so I need the mouse back. Okay, let's fix this. So right, uh, now we have both. You can have them back. So hard mode, uh, so we've, I've been playtesting that all day and we have some QA cycles on that and everything is going pretty well. Uh, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, it's going to be uh, a fairly different experience than what you're experiencing right now on normal. Uh, I've been going through the gamut of campaign, 25 plus, 25 mm -hmm. plus plus, through incursions. Uh, it's, it's, I'm really having to pay attention and run around. So it's been... Uh, so you played this for the first time last night? Uh, no, I've been, I've been kind of tweaking it and, and playing it as we go. But, uh, but definitely uh, a much more concerted effort because now I have the whole, the whole spread. Of, of what's going on with hard mode in. So uh, we've been kind of piecemealing it. I've been really focused on making sure the early game is, is, is really good. So as players are leveling up in campaign, that hard mode okay. is an option. So what, can you kind of, uh, I know nothing about hard sure. mode. Sure, okay. Give me like a brief overview of what we're kind of aiming to achieve, at least for this pass of it. Okay, um, so hard mode should provide a challenge for uh, probably more experienced tower defense players. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to require uh, a little bit more knowledge of where you got to place your towers and definitely maximizing their use in the resistance lanes. But in addition, also um, <coughs> getting involved in the lane. And so like, okay. you're going to need to support your towers a little bit more. You're going to need to be uh, a little bit more involved in your kill zones. And so that, that kind of pressure in being in the lane and, and supporting your towers, taking on enemies, is kind of one of the goals for hard mode. So are there any like secret formulas that change how different characters work in this mode, or is it pretty much the same with bigger numbers, or what are you guys kind of aiming for? Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit of the same with bigger numbers, <laughs> uh, just to kind of to, to test how it goes in. Um, as, as ever when we're doing kind of these big balance changes, you know, it's kind of like, hey, step one, and then kind of we'll tweak as we go. Mm -hmm. um, but there'll be a definite, you'll definitely feel that pressure because like as the creatures have more hit points, uh, they'll be able to get to your defenses and you'll need to jump in uh, much, much more when you're engaged with, your, with, uh, with the hard mode enemies. <laughs> cool, well I'm super excited to play that. Maybe that'll be our next play test. Actually, so this is awesome. We were play testing our first boss fight today. Yeah, that's today. right, that was, yeah. that was really crazy. I, it probably timed me out. I, I got to wave three by myself. I tried to do it before the stream because oh, I had okay. a meeting, but uh, I'll have to play it after. And yeah, see. I was walking around the office. Is it only balanced for four players, or is it balanced for? It should like, be balanced for the well. whole the whole set, like okay. the whole our whole gamut, our whole gamut. One, okay. two, and then four. It took me three re three retries, but I finally got up to wave three. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna make it this time. And then I was like, oh, meetings. <laughs> so yeah. Oh well. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, that was awesome. So that's hard mode. So hard right. mode, it is coming in the next patch. It should, uh, well, it should be coming in a future patch. In a future I'm, patch. You yeah, know, you we, guys aren't allowed. I'm allowed to say next. You guys have to say future. We want to make sure <laughs> it's the right experience. Yeah. That's what we want so, to make sure. So, uh, yeah. And uh, it'll be step one in kind of getting challenging modes out. So I don't want anyone to expect necessarily that it's going to be the most difficult thing in the world because right. uh, that's the whole point of early access. You might get it and everyone will be like, man, you devs, you guys are stupid. Like, this is easy. And then we'll obviously have to fix it. So. So that's exciting. So uh, there's another thing that's going to come out in conjunction with hard mode, yep. uh, which is kind of this ability rebound. So can yeah. you tell us more about that? Sure. Uh, so the ability rebalance is going to kind of be twofold. It's going to be both uh, 
adjusting hero damage a little bit higher, and then mm -hmm. also uh, making the scalers for ability power go a lot higher, and then also, in addition, and I'll keep saying also, also <laughs> making sure that the utility of your abilities mm -hmm. is, is better. Um, so what I'll be, what we're specifically looking at is how gear interacts with your, your specific numbers, uh, making sure that at all ranges of, of play that having an ability power focused character is meaningful and actually has some sort of contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So does that mean that DPS heroes are going to kind of get like a big bump from this ability rebalance? Yes. Or? yes. Yeah, they definitely will get a big bump. Okay. Does that mean like as an apprentice I'll be able to like make everyone tornado for forever? Can you make an item that does that? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll like a permanent tornado? We'll see. Uh, Just that's, for me. It sounds like a good idea. Uh, it sounds like a really great idea for a special stat. Yeah, that would be an awesome special stat. Permanent tornado. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can put a bunch of sky guards one. around it. Like... Yeah, only one permanent tornado. You can't use it again until you kill them. Oh, it's, oh okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I like the tornado ability. I was using it in the, in the boss fight. Cool. Okay, so those are the two like topics. We'll probably talk to uh, Jeffrey Bickle, who's a level designer here yeah. as well, about them when he comes on. I think he's working on the hard modes, is he? Uh, yes, he's working. So he's kind of my level design counterpart. <laughs> so like I'm like playing with the numbers and the enemies and all that kind of stuff, and then he's like, "All right, well let's try this in this level." And, and so there's kind of some really good back and forth, and uh, it's allow it's you know it's really good to have a springboard. Cool. Okay, so you guys will have that coming up in Sound about board. 20 minutes, and before then, we're gonna start some of these questions early. So. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna actually start from the back. Yes. Time. So do you wanna read question 24 to everyone? Sure. Uh, so- uh, You have to say who it's from. Uh, not to say or do you or do no, say? No, you do say. I do say, okay. <laughs> so PSO Master 437, I hope I said that correct. I keep running into people playing incursions and end game content who build towers and train strange spots, easily getting them destroyed and wasting tons of mana in the process since they leveled as DPS or just never played solo. Are you going to add a more advanced tutorial system to the game to help newcomers to the game learn some strategies to build defenses? Um, so there's, I think there's twofold. Uh, we're definitely going to have a look at our new player experience. And then the second part of that is if you're noticing these behaviors, um, it might be useful as well to just try and help them out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we definitely don't want, uh, we'll definitely pro provide a way in the future for you to acknowledge people that have helped you in a match. Mm -hmm. uh, we have like the upvoting system, yeah. and then we have the MVP system. Give so, them a cookie. Yeah, and so like I think there's <laughs> so we'll have mail, some... mail them a cookie button. Yes, oh, that'd be a really good. We should do that. Mail them a cookie. Upvote. Give yeah. them a cookie. Um, and so we think that there's two full things. There's like there's the responsibility of the tutorial, the new player mm -hmm. experience of introducing these things. And um, if you notice, if you're in the forge and you're looking at the, at the tower. The tower stats and the and the and the tower information. Uh, there's a lot of like coming soon and and uh, will be written later kind of descriptions in there. And so a lot of the intricacies will be introduced there. Uh, we feel like uh, players in general enjoy exploring the depth of a game rather than having something spelled out. Because uh, if we specifically spell something out, then mm. I think players will feel yeah. like that's the only way to play, um, and that's definitely not our intention. However. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely want to introduce core concepts and reinforce those concepts. And so that's what our tutorials are gonna focus on, like using you know, like long range ballista tower in a long straight lane, and that's mm -hmm. kind of optimum use there. Um, and then you know, like shorter range, you know, cannonball or fireball tower in like short, like curvy mm -hmm. lanes. And like, so we wanna reinforce those behaviors. Um, and then the second part being, uh, we're gonna kinda have the community help and, and write guides. Cause there's, if you actually go to the forums and you go to the Steam forums, stuff like mm -hmm. that, there's lots of guides and there's lots of helps in like how to play off of a placement. I know one of our streamers uh, does like level based tutorials on his channel. <laughs> yeah. He's like, here's how you beat this map on this difficulty. And it's just, uh, we kind of like that interaction. Yeah, and I think that was uh, one of the most challenging things that we have when working on a four player co op strategy game is yeah. how do you get people to work together well? Yes. Because yeah. people are going to have different strategies, they're going to want to play different ways. And we've talked about a ton of just crazy ideas yeah, to do it. I think, yeah. like, does everyone have a lane? Yes. And they just control, like, you segment everyone and they have a lane, or does everyone build in everyone's lane? And I think that, you know, we're going to be really looking at player behavior and questions like this are really good to kind of get for us to figure out where do you guys want this to go for the public matches versus yeah. private matches and those kind of things. I think another thing as well is, uh, you know, uh, putting something into suggestions. If we have a tutorial video out that might need some correction, or if you think there's a really good candidate for a tutorial video, uh, we read the forums all the time. So if you if you have a really good idea like that, we you know we'll read it and mm -hmm. consider it definitely. 
Yeah, I think we have someone here who said that they made uh, Huntress DD2 fan art. So if you did that, thank you. That's awesome. awesome. There's actually a section on our site that's dedicated to fan art. I think it only has one thing so far, so you can yeah. get number two. If you get that up there, I'm going to go yeah, have have to stream and check it, it out. It might be number one. Yeah. So you can upload it there, and then everyone who visits the site can see it. So if you guys have any questions from the comments, please let us know. We have iPass Butter here playing Chrome enemies. Yes, nice. guess right. I was like, Ruin is probably playing Chrome enemies. Uh, and uh, we are answering questions from the forums here. So this is, uh, the next question is Town, with two N's, asks, can we get a rough number for how many pets and costumes are coming out? Let's see. Um, so I'll just, a rough number, uh, we're gonna have a handful of pets and a <laughs> good number of costumes. Yeah. Uh, so I think that uh, for our initial wave, I think it's really important for us to satisfy the requirements for the early access purchases. Yeah. So those bundles, and so we're, that's sort of our, our primary focus of yeah. the costumes and embellishments is, hey, people already paid for costumes and embellishments, right. so sure, it's hell better get theirs first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so that's at least, uh, if you go to DD2 and on Steam, I believe, those are listed out. Yep. So that should be, that should give uh, a really good idea of what we're going to release for costumes mm -hmm. specifically. For pets, we're going to really go very focused, and we're, um, I'm not sure if anybody's talked about it before, but there's not a yet. couple, all right, well, there's <laughs> going to be some pets. Yeah, and there's going to be some pets. We've shown them the... Uh, <laughs> Well, they're looking at the, the the NPC that's related to pets right now, yes. and uh, they saw Enrique draw the uh, the propeller cat. Ah, okay. Last year. Okay. So they've seen the propeller cat. Okay. So we're slowly going to be teasing pets until it comes out, which is in a future patch, but not the next patch. <laughs> and uh, there will be multiple pets. There will be more than yes. one. Yes. But less than a million. <laughs> yep. That's a so, good range. <laughs> yes, it's a good range. Um, I think the answer is that in the long term, there's going to be a lot of both of these things. Yes. Um, but we are in early access now, so it's going to be a test. And there's going to be some trade-offs between quality, where it's like, right. do we want a ton of pets that are lower quality, or do we want a few that's higher? And our team with this title has tended to stick to the fewer and higher. Yes. So I would kind of expect that to continue throughout all these things for now. Yeah. Once we know how to make something, though, then we might just kind of like, oh, have a milestone where it's like, just generate a ton. It's like, okay, we know how to make pets, so now make all of the pets. Yes, all the pets. So we'll see. <laughs> Cool. That was a good question. Thank you, Town. So Town also asked, will the PS4 version of the game be in any way compatible with the PC version? Uh, we'd love it to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, so maybe in the long term, it's something we look into. There's uh, a lot of just, I think, uh, Helldivers guys. By the way, if you haven't played Helldivers, play Helldivers. It's awesome. I think it's coming out soon. I got to play it at the PlayStation Experience. And Arrowhead did an excellent job. But they said recently it took them an extra like eight months to ship that game because they had a cross-platform between Vita, yes. PS3, and PS4. It definitely so. is a non-trivial <laughs> problem. Uh, yeah. We would definitely love to do it. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, you know, it's definitely doable. If anyone says it's impossible, it's not impossible. It's right. totally doable. Uh, it's just time, so it may be the case where we say, hey, we want to get the PS4 version out for PS4 users, and we want to get it out you know, this year, not in two years, so right. then we're going to do it there, and then maybe right. if it's something people want, that's a place where we work to, so obviously the ideal world is one where everyone can play any game on whatever platform right. they want, but right. uh, sometimes development realities prevent that from happening, unfortunately, yes. yeah. so just imagine how you're going to be friends with friend someone on PSN, as an example of a problem, right. how do you friend someone on PSN that's on Steam? Yes. To play yeah. with them forever, and then what are all the things that you have to work with those, and then is you know are each platform happy with those? So there's a lot yeah. of things that have to be worked out uh, in order to do that. Uh, it's you really funny because all of SOE's games, all of who used to be SOE, all of those right. are cross-platform, but now yeah. they're not SOE anymore. Yeah, so they kind of right? yeah. yeah, so they kind of like snuck. They like got secret secret cross-platform and all did. their titles. Yes, they did. Uh, so we'll see yeah. how that works. Is H1Z1 a cross-platform? I don't know. That's, you know, that's don't not on PS4 know. yet. I, I think know. it's only P. I think it's only PC right now. Yeah. On so, Steam. Anyway, so yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> definitely a great question. Something we'd love to do. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is a good one because yes. we kind of just scheduled these. Although we we won't answer this exactly, but uh, ETA on Hunt or Ovalg asks ETA on Huntress Monk and Squire overhauls. I think the best answer for that is one soon, <laughs> another one further than soon, and then the final one after the one before that. Yeah. Uh, but all this year, all this year, definitely being uh, on the table, and yeah. we're definitely looking at and discussing this stuff right now. You guys are discussing. <laughs> we are. Let me know. I don't know <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Jay really answered that one on the head, and, and do we know an order? I think we know that we want to do, like, 
the squire last. Yes. <laughs> so uh, really, and this is probably something that we're going to bring up in an mm-hmm. influence vote, maybe. Although we oh, actually talked about first, that. They love which ones do you want us to do first. Yeah, we actually just talked about that. <laughs> we know that you guys don't like that too much. However, this might be worthwhile for like a one, or yeah. maybe a shorter influence vote. I think vote. it would be a really good one, actually, even though people don't like the first. It's right. like when the difference is months, you know. Yeah. Uh, so we definitely want to take a look at the Huntress or Monk first. Mm-hmm. We think they're, they're the most in need of love, even though they're both beloved characters. <laughs> yeah. So it's... Uh, yeah, we, um, I think, you know, I, we were all putting down, like, suggestions, like, we're drawing straws over who to do first, and yeah. I, I've always been telling them, like, it's like, the monk needs a lot of time to fix. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know if we want to do him first, even though he might be the most uh, important to fix, but, uh, yeah, those are definitely getting done and getting done this year, so yep. I don't know if they'll be as pro- big as the apprentice one, maybe, some of them probably will be. I'm hoping, I guess we'll see. I'm hoping okay. to, to kind of... Top it? Yeah, to top okay. it. Do better. That's that's my goal. Oh, yeah, awesome. Well, Never take yeah. a step back. Keep moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're really excited about doing that. I'll be coming in the future. Oh, this is another good one from Ovag. Any closer to fixing the incursion crashing bug? I think this one's fixed. It's fixed. fixed. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fixed. So I think we have a hot fix planned for next week. Uh, mm. And when that comes out, your game will no longer crash from that bug. It's yeah. interesting. That bug's actually not only on incursions. It's on yeah. everywhere. But yeah. the incursions are just... So much harder with I think like more enemies that yeah. the case for that thing to happen actually happens way more often in yes. incursions. So, yep. so that bug will be fixed. So if you're crashing in other places too, uh, that will probably be fixed as well. All right. Next question. Question 19. Since we're going backwards, will there be any new elemental-based weapons, new combos, or extensions to combos? Uh, as far as the first one goes, we have one or two. Uh, let me answer. Let me answer that in a, in a really good way. So we feel like with the existing elements, that we should expand those elements first before we add new elemental damages. So we want to really flesh out what uh, it's fire, water, storm, and earth mean, uh, and that means potentially new combos. Um, and then, uh, as far as the extensions to combos. Um, I think that that would kind of be covered by having new combos exist. Mm-hmm. We have a we actually have a design that has all of this stuff laid out of like all the different kinds of combos that we wanted to do, and so that's kind of coming in a later foundation, uh, later uh, foundation patch. So Margo told me that uh, on MS fourteen you guys have time to work on combos. Schedule that. So I hope that happens. Giving away all the secrets. I don't know when <laughs> MS14 is coming out. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, I was just quite, I'm like, are you sure they have time? I was like, show me on, on the schedule that they have time. Apparently, you guys do. So, I hope that comes in there. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think that that will also have to do with the hero revamps, probably. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Even if we add new combos and that kind of stuff, if yeah. we don't change people's towers, it's like, oh, yes. Why? So, um, so like, I think, like, uh, like, in my estimation, like, one of the... One of the combos I think that needs the most work is the oil to burning combo because mm-hmm. there's only one way to oil enemies yeah. right now, and then so then there's really only one way really to, to catch one fire. The, the uh, you know spinny guy needs to just be like a little <laughs> fire hydrant thing. Yeah. with oil. With oil, yep, yep. Yeah. So there's a couple. There's they a couple already redesigned there. it for you. <laughs> well done. done. You Let's ship it. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't even need an art change to make oil right. come out of the sides. People will like it. So we have an interesting question from the comments here, which uh, asks, why do we think there are more early access games coming out on Steam than actual games themselves? I think that there's, um, I think it's, it's a twofold question. I think that what's happening is, and the first step is that developers, for the longest time, like, we love interacting with the community. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it drives us, like, getting the feedback and all mm-hmm. that and all those. Uh, e-access is a really great way, like e-access, <laughs> early access or EA, is a, um, is a really great way for developers to get immediate feedback on what they're doing. And so um, uh, most of the time, I think like as a, from a design standpoint, like we just have like a really good idea and then we execute and make a core game. Yeah. And then players can say like, oh, well, I'll tweak this or we like this or we don't like that. Um, if you think back into the olden days, like when you have like on console, you have a disc, mm-hmm. and there's no patches, yeah. no new content, no fixes, and what you're getting is just good what's on the disc, right? The good old <laughs> days, right? And uh, and so now we have this this tool to release a game and and iterate on that game with the community, and that's just and I think that that's something that we just get excited by as developers. That's mm-hmm. where I look at it. Yeah, makes our lives a lot harder. Though. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Uh, so the time pressures are very different. Yeah. Uh, we had a question about a bug about the lightning aura, and if it was mm. fixed, then it's hot fixed. But unfortunately, the question is gone now. 
So I'm not sure. So if there's a any increase in lightning or attack rate, no matter the increase, provides a 0.1 increase. So they're saying. It's just, uh, if it's based on defense speed, so the lightning order, Laura, uh, sorry, the lightning Laura, aura, lightning Laura. <laughs> uh, the way the defense speed works is that it, uh, it kind of converts in the background to a percentage decrease. Mm -hmm. And so because it's already kind of a fast tower and depending on what special stats you have, um, each point of defense speed will be worth less as far as a decrease or like an increase in its attack rate. So it's, it's kind of mathy, um, and maybe I should take it to the <laughs> forum so we can kind of discuss yeah. it and kind of break everything down. Uh, but there is, like, in the future, we are going to readdress what defense speed means and how that is applied to defenses. Uh, that's something, like, further down the line. Future, future, future so, update. Yeah, uh, you guys hear it, you know, hear it first. Yeah. You know, you heard it here first. Uh, so that's kind of, that's the, I hope that answers your question. Um, we have so another question here, happens. which is uh, kind of similar, which okay. is, what does the heroic presence damage healing do on items, and how does it work? Damage healing items? Yeah, heroic. so I think heroic presence is like the, it's the heal that the monk yeah. has, so does, is there a special stat with that that deals damage or something? That seems to be what they're saying. Do you look like you're drawing a blank? I am. I'm trying to think about the special stat that it would be. We have, I think we have one that gives you a damage bonus. And so mm -hmm. I, think, I believe this, the special stat, and maybe the Twitch guys will, will correct me, but I believe the special stat gives you, uh, using the ability gives everybody that gets healed by it in Heroic Presence an actual damage boost. Mm -hmm. And so we have a special stat that increases that. I passed and by so, saying yes. Yeah. And so that's, um, and so basically it's a, just a damage multiplier on your hero damage. Uh, we might tweak that to make mm -hmm. it also apply to ability power in this revamp. Um, that's actually one of the things I've been thinking about doing to cool. give that, that specific ability more utility. Um, so that's how you get infinite tornado. Yes, that's, that would be how you get Yeah, sure. Okay, so you, <laughs> stand in the, you stand in, you get heroic presence by the monk, and then you have an infinite tornado. You heard it here first. <laughs> that will, it'll be a bug in the next patch, and everyone will be like, see it? They said it was a feature in the live stream. And everyone will hear me. Uh, where you started. <laughs> okay, cool. Blacksmith is going to have a talk with me after this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have a question here, which is from XRDX, which okay. asks... Oh, wait, no, that's what we're oh, saying. Yeah. Sorry. We have one from Nico Semp, uh, which is, will you let us lock items in our inventory anytime soon? Every time, I'm so scared of deleting stuff I need. That is uh, coming soon. Not, not this patch, but it's definitely on our, it's on our feature list for that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have actually done a really big initiative recently to mm -hmm. widen the forge that's coming in the, yeah. next, in the, next, uh, in the next release, the next patch. Um, and so uh, we've talked a little bit about, about uh, victims of scope <laughs> and, and stuff like that. And so the locking, locking items feature was just one that got pushed back because we wanted to give you guys more room mm -hmm. and a better visual experience in the forge. Now, I would, I would like to you know, kind of extend this question and just say, what are your thoughts on like inventory and inventory management in the game in general? I know you told me some of your thoughts. I sure. think they'd love to hear that and it might inform you know where we're going in the future. Um, so we have uh, so we as we uh, more mature our like item enhancement systems and just inventory in general, there's going to be much more of a quicker iteration on going into a map, collecting a bunch of items, and few like feeding those items to other mm -hmm. items to kind of get more power. And so that's kind of the overall flow that we like. Uh, we've sort of hinted at there being later phases for item enhancement. Um, as far as uh, the room, like and how much bag space is available and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, um, there's going to be a couple options available in the future. Um, I think we've talked about you know you can purchase additional bags mm -hmm. and there's like some premium bags you can get as well. Um, and so as far as the player flow of where we would love this to be is. You guys go into a match, you collect a bunch of items, and you feed those items to other items to make the stuff that you really care about more powerful. Uh, so that's as far as how the inventory goes. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, uh, to help out with that, we have some planned features about filtering and organizing your bags and maybe doing some, some quality of life things like you can say, all legendaries into this bag, or all weapons oh, yeah, into this that's bag. That's not even on the list. <laughs> it's not. It's not on here, but it's stuff yeah. that we have on our on our feature list, and uh, we'll we'll be ta triaging that <laughs> as, as the victims kind of go um, as we take a look at do we want do we want to revamp an older system or do we want to mm -hmm. add a new feature mm -hmm. uh, in in our milestones and in our uh, patches. So I have a question here, which is. Uh, What's going to be done about players who join a lobby and troll and then destroy everything and leave? 
Okay. Um, well, I think that there's a limit right now to, I don't think you can actually interact with, if you're in a match, I don't think you can do anything except for upgrade and repair towers that aren't yours. Mm -hmm. I believe that's a restriction that we have. Okay, thank you for verifying that for me. Um, uh, but in the upcoming patch, we're also going to have uh, vote kicking and mm -hmm. so some player moderation features in there. So we're giving the community some tools. Um, to manage griefing players. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the easiest way to And we'll see that. how those go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so we're going to get some metrics on that. We're going to take a look at how those things are being used. Um, as we've discussed in the past, we want to make sure that we're reinforcing good behavior and uh, uh, discouraging uh, griefing <laughs> a negative player. Yeah, so uh, it'll be interesting to see if that solves the problem yes. or makes it worse. We're hoping. So we'll find out. <laughs> we will find out. Uh, we also had a question up there about event items, like are we going to be doing events or event items, those things like they were referring to in the past, we did uh, community events with DD1 where there'd be like a special item that was given away. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> as far as a delivery date on those, um, we don't really have those coming Blizzard. soon, trademarked. <laughs> so uh, well, it's something... This one's Blizzard soon though. Yeah, right. <laughs> this one's like Diablo 3 is coming out soon. We've actually been uh, we've actually been taking a look at a lot of like community initiatives mm -hmm. recently about rewards for those, um, but I think as far as our immediate future, we really want to get those bundle rewards out. Uh, yeah, you know that's kind of what we're focused on right now. And then we have, uh, you know, we'll be planning out different kind of uh, custom events and special events and those kind of things and, and having rewards associated with those. This year is going to be a really big year for, you know, I don't want to give too much away. This year is going to be a really great year. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're doing lots. I think like, uh, you know, some of us, the people who've been around since the Defense Council first started in October, like 2013 or November 2013, last year was really our like build the game part right, of it. Right. And this year is like, oh, the, you know, the RPG side of it. And the RPG yeah. side is really what gets everyone excited. Yes. So it's like, yeah. okay, well, we have the game, we have the tire defense parts and it needs to be balanced, it needs to be fixed, but also we get to add in all these elements like keep you playing beyond a 20 or 30 minute session. So I think everyone's going to be really excited to get all of those as they come out. Uh, I think we have time for one more question with sure. you and then we're going to get Jeff on. Okay. So uh, we have a question here which is, oh yes. Oh, is it a good like one? Is like it a juicy one? Are you going to be able to click swap between heroes during the build phase? <laughs> So we discussed that internally. Everyone, everyone's got an opinion on this one. We've discussed it internally. Uh, we have some options to explore. Um, this would be another one of those Blizzard soon things <laughs> or earlier, depending on how it all, everybody's kind of everybody's kind of laughing. Uh, we like the idea. We also I like the idea. we also <laughs> like the idea of. Uh, reinforcing things in World of the Forge. Mm -hmm. It's something that differentiates Dungeon Defenders 2 from other games out there. And in fact, if we know, um, I'm just going to flip the page real here, one of the questions is, what do we like and dislike about Dungeon Defenders <laughs> 2? Um, that's by Sinistar. Uh, one of the things that we like, or at least that I personally like, is that some interactions happen in World. And so mm -hmm. a lot of our initiatives, as far as what, what role the tavern has mm -hmm. moving forward, there are some stations and vendors that will be in the tavern that you won't be able to access in the forge or anywhere mm -hmm. else. And so we like that um, anchoring is a good word for that. So we're going to yeah. anchor certain experiences to certain places in the tavern. Um, and so in certain times, it's appropriate to have a solid anchor. And sometimes it's not. And hero swapping is something that we're looking at whether or not we want to anchor that to the forge. Cool. So actually... Uh I think we have one more minute left. Do you okay. maybe want to run through that that question a little bit more? What are some of the things that you like and don't like about sure. it? Sure. Um, so what I like, um, I am a strategy game mm -hmm. junkie. Like mm -hmm. I grew up playing Civilization, SimCity, um, like Sim Ant, like all mm -hmm. the Sim series and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so tower defense and that kind of, those kind of elements are, are something that are kind of in my gaming blood. Um, I really, really enjoy them. Uh, and then I'm also a third-person shooter junkie uh, and third-person brawler junkie. And Dungeon Defenders 2 is one of those cross-genre games where we have good elements of third-person combat, mm -hmm. uh, third-person shooting, brawling, and then also tower defense in a way that isn't really explored anywhere else. We have some interesting elements to this game that uh, there are, like Sanctum is one, mm -hmm. and then uh, Orcs Must Die is another. Uh, and those have other elements that we don't have, and then we have elements that they don't have. Um, 
<laughs> that was <laughs> sufficiently nebulous. Well, of different so, elements. Yes, we all different things. <laughs> um, but I really like I really like our towers. I really like our our presentation. I think that our art style is very cohesive in a way that is approachable um, and that uh, gives that kind of power dream fantasy mm -hmm. that like fantasy games really kind of execute on. Like when you think about Blizzard games, you know they have this really good cohesive art style that uh, makes the world feel like one unit. Um, that's something that definitely attracts me to this project. Um, in addition, I think that uh, I know that it's it's hard to to uh, expose this to you guys, but our plans for the progression and what we want to do with our RPG and what we want to do with you know future heroes mm -hmm. and existing heroes that's something that is really really exciting. Um, most games, uh, most online lobby games like we have, you know, we were just talking about hero swapping, mm -hmm. you only have one option. Like when you yeah. play like a MOBA, like you pick your character mm -hmm. and you go in and there's some reasons for that. Um, and we have, you know, we have flexibility in this, in, in this game and it kind of allows us to um, challenge the player in a way as a strategy game would mm -hmm. and have solutions based around what hero you're bringing in and how you're kidding out your character. Uh, and that's something, that sort of challenge and strategy, that's an element that isn't always, isn't really present in the game industry right now. So that ability for, like, like if you think, like, think really, really hard about like games like Dark Souls and what they execute yeah. on and, and other older and titles like ours where you have to think about it. You have to learn about the game. You have to really understand what decisions you're making and then execute on those in the match. And some games do that very well and some games don't as much. Um, and there's different levels of that. Like there's the moment, like the you know, first person shooters traditionally are like the moment to one five mm -hmm. second. Like, am I making the right decision in this five seconds? Um, whereas our game is like, did I make the, the right decision two minutes ago? And is, is my tower executing on that? Uh, that was really long-winded. So uh, <clears throat> I like strategy games, I like tower defense games, I like third person games, I love our art style. Um, and uh, and a personal note, I love the team. <laughs> trendy, trendy as a team is fantastic. Everybody's really, really great, and we and we have a really good time. Awesome, we like you too. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, oh, butter. Right. oh, butter. All right, well, thank you for being on the show. Yes. Uh, we'll leave with that sentimental note. We have Jeffrey coming on. I think he's right outside. Thanks, guys. Wave him in. I'll see you on the forums. It's a designer swap. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, he almost stole Oh good, questions. what's up everybody? Hey, so this is Jeffrey Bickle. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm, I'm Jeff Bickle. <laughs> yeah, and you I'm want to a, tell everyone I'm who a, doesn't know what you do here? I'm a technical level designer uh, here at Trinity Entertainment. Working oh, on man. Dungeon Defenders 2. What is, what is technical level design? What's um, the difference between a technical level designer and a level designer? Well, uh, like both level designers and, tech, and technical level designers will do level layouts and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then level like regular level designers they'll focus more on that and then technical level designers will do more scripting um, making things work behind the scenes so like L and like I've been doing a lot of incursions recently okay. stuff like that okay, would, cool. would fall under so me. incursions and I also heard you've been working on hard mode yes yes so actually we have two topics today I think the first right. one was more of a J one it's about the ability, ability rebalance, rebalance okay. coming online the second one is hard mode hard mode yeah Jay talked about it a little bit but I know you're working on it too right. so I'd love for you to share you know, you've been doing on hard modes for the next patch. Okay, uh, we've been, we just got it. Um, last night? Th yeah, last night, going into testing today, mm -hmm. uh, going, through the, going through the process, getting, um, you know. Goblins and orcs killed. Goblins but and orcs. But more difficult. Really. Yeah, um, okay. yeah, uh, so uh, a lot of what we're doing is uh, just adjusting the scalers, so stuff will um, level up differently. They'll, they'll start, um, They'll start a lot beefier, and they'll they'll grow to do more damage. Uh, additionally, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the stuff we're or one of the things we're looking at now is is um, increasing resistances by by quite a bit. So like a thousand percent, like just completely resistant. <laughs> like uh, if we can't get damaged. I, I, by I magic. think we're I think we're gonna <laughs> try to save that. immunity for for okay. you know for more, like difficult more difficult modes in the in the future. Oh, but for for cool. hard, they're just. Uh, they're just far more resistant, so you're okay. you're going to need to pay more attention to which towers you're placing where. You're going to need to to focus on billboards. All right, so and then are like the like is the composition of what comes out of the you know uh, spawn points going to be different than normal um, or we the same? Uh, we've gone uh, both ways on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, we've come down on making it uh, for the most part for the majority of the game. It's going to be the same composition. Okay. Uh, we wanted to. Provide difficulty um, through the scalers and, and through the resistances, and, and making what was already there harder. 
Um, the, the exception is uh, the first two or three maps of the mm -hmm. campaign um, where we have our, our new player experience or sort of yeah. easing players into it. Uh, that's gone on hard mode. It's, it's just... It's, it's not it's, easing you into dive hard mode. right in. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, it, I mean, they're easier than the, than the levels after them, but they're not... <laughs> They're not easy. They're not. They're not. More. They're not easy. Yeah. So, uh, and then, can you explain a little bit, like, how would hard mode work for a player? So, is a player, you know, they expected to run through normal, and then you loop back and run through hard, or can they choose to play either one as they play through? Um, I, I don't think it's been finalized yet, but mm -hmm. what we're looking at now is uh, players able to right from the bat, or right off the bat, select hard or normal for okay. um, any campaign map, any free play map, mm -hmm. uh, just across the board. Cool. And, and then, obviously, if you if it's your first time playing, uh, <laughs> you will probably not want to choose yeah. hard right from the get go because um, I'm gonna choose hard though. Yeah, Anyways, that's fine. I just die a couple times and never play again. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wish you wouldn't. But uh, <laughs> I wish I would too. <laughs> but, but I do. In every you sound game. like you made up your mind. So <laughs> just gonna mess it too. Yeah. You know, so uh, and then I was like, what kind of are there additional rewards? Are the loot profiles different from hard? Is it just that is harder? Uh, that is something we're we're starting on. We're we're looking at ways to scale up loot, um, ways to to incentivize you playing hard mode. All okay. right, um, that's we wanted to get the uh, the court game balance in and, and into, into testing before mm -hmm. we started that. Um, All right, cool. just so we would have more time making sure it was fun while we're working on how we reward you. So yeah, so uh, we'd love for you guys watching the stream to maybe start a forum thread or talk about maybe what you would like to see, yeah. the kind of rewards for hard mode to be. Uh, we may not be able to get a lot or any of them in when we first implement hard mode, but I right. definitely think it's something that we're going to look at uh, in the future to update hard mode and make it worth playing through. I know personally what I would like to see is I want to make sure that like the last couple of hard hard maps are all like above <laughs> the last map, so it's not like everyone shifts from doing incursion to incursion hard, but they're like shift from incursion, incursion to like free play hard. Exactly. Like they're way back like, up. Yeah. That's, uh, like, that's that's something we, we definitely want to see happen. Yeah. And um, it's it's all a matter of tweaking the numbers until it does. Yeah, exactly. You just gotta make this one like this much harder <laughs> this one. So it's gotta be like Right. Yeah. This just make it impossible. Uh, I, I will tell you though that uh, in our initial tests uh, I took a character that I've beaten incursions on. Mm -hmm. It's 25 legendaries, <laughs> it's, it's solid. I, I loaded into a hard mode incursion, I did not get past the loop. <laughs> Perfect, that sounds like what I want to so. see. And then we, we're going to make iPads Butter play these. Uh, <laughs> and, and he's he's maybe so excited. Next week, and next week or the week <laughs> after, and there's going to be like a punishment if he loses. Whatever, yeah. bring it on. Yeah, no beer Friday for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fun for your job at this moment. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's hard modes for you guys. So uh, you have a lot more information that you've ever had now. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. We're play testing it now. Uh, we'll probably play it on the stream in the next couple of weeks, and then we'll get it out to you guys. So it's really exciting. Um, let's see here. I'm going to look for some questions from the comments before okay. we start answering these questions. Here we have about we start at one. Page. So we started on the back actually. So that's we're going to go. We're going to wrap back around and uh, go through them. Let's see here. Uh, so someone is saying single player is too hard. Uh, do you have any comment on that? Uh, single player, what did they mention? What level range? Just in general, um, it's it's something we've we've taken a look at before, mm -hmm. um, and we hope to take a look at again, uh, pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, we will look at it again <laughs> in the future. We're hoping to get it done sooner than later. Um, so for the majority of the campaign and free play, uh, sing there is a separate single player experience. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll be fighting less enemies. Uh, we try to make sure you're only focused on one area of the map at a time. Mm -hmm. Only only one area really has a, an intense pocket that you need to focus on. But then um, later, in the in like hard, yeah. or sorry, in twenty five plus plus and incursions, uh, that sort like of goes away. It's just, just it, it, yeah. if you're good enough to be here and then doing this, then you should you should have you, you should be splitting your focus everywhere. Um, Obviously, we want another pass at that. We want to make sure that single player is engaging across the board, start mm -hmm. to finish. Um, and so it's, it's something we hope to be working on soon. Perfect. All right, cool. So let's start going through these questions. We have, it looks like, 20 minutes in uh, a slightly under All 20 right. questions. So we're actually going to start we'll burn with question these. 17, which is from Sean Poe. So All thank right. you, Sean Poe. Shout out to Sean Poe. Are there any plans to add player set tower targeting priorities? Uh, for example, mm -hmm. Sanctums or Defender's Quest. By this I mean the ability to set a tower to attack strongest or weakest enemies first, closest or furthest enemies first, magic or physical enemies first, etc. 
Uh, that is a really interesting suggestion. I've not heard that brought up Circle. before. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> we should. I, I think it. I think it'd be something neat to look at. Um, I don't think there are any plans on the table at this point, but it, it certainly sounds like it could be cool uh, a fairly neat idea for a neat idea for one of those like system revamps that we're working on. Right. I, I know we have a bunch of system revamps in the work. If it was. It'd be kind of fun, like when you right. level up. I don't know. That's a cool idea. There's a lot of cool ways to use that. So I yeah. think uh, that would be really fun and really powerful and uh, something that will definitely throw a design team. I think it's going to be victim of what should. gets done first, though. Right. So I'm not uh, sure if that's the most important thing we should be working <laughs> on, but it's certainly an interesting thing. It, it to would work be. On. It would be. A, it would be cool. Yeah. Uh, so Sean Poe also had another question, and All he right. asks: Are there any plans to implement amazing blocks that players can use to modify the path enemies take? Think Sanctum or Defense Grid. Uh, or fixed force building zones. Think Cursed Treasure and Kingdom Rush. Uh, I know there are no plans for uh, mm -hmm. fixed or forced yeah. building zones. Um, something that we've talked a little bit about. I'm, I'm not sure it's ever going to show up in a map, but having um, sort of specific areas of maps where you can build here and get mm -hmm. a bonus, but it's not uh, by any means yeah. necessary. Um, it, it's something level design Boss has fight we at. have don't build here or else <laughs> yeah, yeah that is uh, <laughs> that is going on right now but uh, for, for amazing blocks uh, I think we're we're looking at making sort of your barricades and your uh, magic caves, mm -hmm. those sort of things the equivalent um, like obviously they, they'll stop and they're able to go down but uh, I don't think we have any plans for being able to put up a hard set block just because of the way our our enemies work the way our yeah. lands work it, it well, you know, I think, I actually think, uh, I actually love, you know, Force Building Zone, Tire Defense games like Kingdom Rush, mm -hmm. and that would be a really cool, just like, game mode on top of, you know, as right. like a, like a modifier to all the maps where you, we just pick the locations and you have mm -hmm. to pick which towers go there. I, I think that'd be, it'd be a lot of fun, because you'd have yeah. uh, fewer decision points, but they would all matter Yeah, more. we could set it up like a really traditional, right. I think we had pure strategy mode in the first game, but that wasn't... It wasn't really like a pure tower defense game. Right. It was like a DD one without any action element, which you right. may or may not have used anyways. But that what could be really like cool. Like, what if we like just took town and like it would have to be levels? I think with you know, uh, kind of interlane building areas, right? Instead Where, of just in the lane, but then you could kind of let people pick how to sort out a row there and have a, yeah, maps, really that cool. are, maps that are going to support that from the offset. Yeah, and then I don't know how long it would take you to set up like there. spawns. And timers, uh, but <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, cool. So thank you, Sean, Poe, for those two questions. Yeah, so we nice. have another question from Nico Semp, uh, which is: Will any pet be able to have any kind of effect stats, or will you bind effect stats on different pets, like defense power on medallions, defense health on totems, and hero ability on rings? I could not answer that question. For I you. can answer this question. There you go. So this was a big fight, which uh, I ended up winning a little bit. Um, right. <laughs> I knew the fight. So, I didn't know yeah, the outcome. There was a fight. So, um, so there's a uh, you know this is a great question to ask for it. It's kind of the question of you know should just you be able to get anything on any pet? Because someone might want a dragon that's defense power, and someone mm -hmm. might want like a cat that's defense power. And then is it fair if the dragon is right. defense and the cat's not? And so originally the design was actually just to have anything be anything. But uh, one of the things that we've been seeing uh, from the players, from you guys actually, is that you know it's. Having everything be anything, even though it sounds good in theory, is really bad. And uh, it makes it impossible for people to like talk about items and to have goals and things to do. So one of the things that you notice in the game right now is like it's really hard to say, like, hey, did you get this weapon? Right. Because special stats just you know show up on any weapon. So it's instead of talking about like this cool weapon, you're talking about, you know, this cool special stat, which right. sounds it's way less the, sexy. The four new legendaries <laughs> like, exactly. feel Help better a than bit. the other legendaries. Yeah, but they're not named, I don't right. think. So it's like, you know, you need named, cool-looking things right. to be able to say. Like, in, in imagine if in DD1, every pet could have the genie ability. Then it would have been like, man, the genie's so cool, it gives you more <laughs> mana. It would have been like, man, you got a pet with mana, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, <coughs> so it's less interesting. So the decision ended up being that... Um, the core stats, those can go across all pets, so like we're not gonna have like a defense power pet, mm -hmm. but abilities and passive abilities will be like kind of somewhat pet specific. So, you know, you, you're not gonna necessarily have a cat that like breathes fire, or if we ever put a genie back in, you know, you may not have one that, uh, you may not have a dragon that gives you mana, so. Oh, my, vo my voice is getting sore. 
<coughs> Can you read the next question? I will read the next question. Pandinator DD asks, how do you plan on making new content rewarding and keep the old relevant while giving enough progression on new maps and modes? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a good, solid question. Um, I think that, that's something we're looking at now. We want to make sure that as you're going on to new content, you're rewarded with new and interesting loot. You're rewarded with new and interesting experiences. Um, and we're, we're always, you know, keeping, keeping the challenge there, keeping the fun there, and then uh, making sure that, you know, uh, as, as, sorry, uh, the new loot is... Interesting so in different like, ways, like the, the legendary weapons, stuff like that. This is like the age-old MMO question, right? right? Like, oh, you, this expansion pack sucks because it made everything you already did not yeah. good. Yeah, so the question's I, a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think, uh, you know, part of the answer is when we're in early access now. So we may be making stuff not worth anything right now, but that's also because we're finishing right. the game. So imagine if you only had through level 5 in the game, and we added 5 through 10, um, mm -hmm. It wouldn't kind of be fair to be like, oh man, you made all my level five stuff bad. It's like, well, yeah, we it's like this level five. We kind of have to. You know? So uh, that's definitely going to be a thing that happens as we put out new maps. And in fact, I think we're actually holding on to the maps to make mm -hmm. it even more of a thing because we right. don't want to like, you know, we don't want to just add a map and then have you still get the twenty five plus plus stuff because you guys may be like. Oh hey, that's really cool! <laughs> like now there's another map at the end of twenty five plus plus. But right. when the game gets out of early access and releases with those thirty maps at twenty five plus plus, that's not cool. They want them at thirty and thirty five and forty right. and fifty we, and those kind of things. So, we want to uh, make sure that going forward, we, we yeah. keep our sort of breadth of maps mm -hmm. relevant in the end game. Um, exactly. So so yeah. So, yeah, so an early access is going to change, and then in the future, you know. Who knows? I think uh, this is one of the most challenging things to do. Everyone wishes they could live in a magical world where you know we can develop as fast as you guys can play, <laughs> and then we just keep developing more content. And you guys keep playing more content, and you never get to a point where you right. like play, and then we have to release. <laughs> so, uh, and that's pretty high tower. So, yeah. it's something. Uh, that's a great question. It's something we'll be working on. We'd love for you guys' opinion. Uh, you know, when we release what you think the best thing to do is. I'm saying it, if someone in the comments can remind me, it'd be awesome. There's an MMO recently, I think it was on Kickstarter, somewhere, where they claimed that they had the solution to this problem. Yeah. And I don't remember so uh, what it was. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I want to see what it was and re read what their solution was. So, uh, so bath, or batophobia. Phobia, so batophobia. Okay, here we go. You're Afraid of bats. Uh, I miss the videos you guys were making about the glitches you were finding. I do too. Uh, any chance those might come back? Maybe you can make those features into challenges. Also, please add the Rainbow Cat Flask as a customization option. Uh, yeah, I miss those, yeah. and I think uh, it would be awesome to bring them back. Uh, uh, unfortunately, actually, I'll announce this, our uh, video editor, Alex. Not unfortunately, it's really cool. Yeah. He's joining the Army Reserve, so he's mm -hmm. actually in training for the next 10 weeks. So, um... Uh, I pass butter over here is taking over some of his video editing duties for us. So I'm, I'm not sure. Sorry, everybody. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's it's okay. Sorry. You try your best. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I don't know if those are going to come back really soon because we're kind of overloaded on video work that we have to do. But uh, that's definitely something that uh, you know we love to bring back in the future. And we'll, I'll tell the QA guys too. They just were they had this bug earlier today, which I thought would be awesome to show, which was right. like. Uh, we're getting the costume system again, so for some reason all the heroes were invisible except for their weapons. And I was like, man, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have Danny asks, will there be an influence vote for what characters come out next? Uh, maybe. I know yeah. that uh, something we you know we've talked about on the influence report uh, this week, which mm -hmm. is that we want more meaningful influence votes. So I think that's something that we want to look at. I think we said before that we're going to focus on doing new heroes before we bring mm -hmm. back old heroes. So it's kind of interesting because you have to think about how would that vote take place, right? Like, do we like show you three pictures and we're like, pick the picture? Mm -hmm. Or do we like tell you like our ideas? There's for three play styles. Exactly. Which of these play styles do you think we should? Pursue? Exactly. And so then do you do, do, mm -hmm. do them together or separate? So I think that's something that we can definitely look at and as we kind of get to making new heroes uh, late, 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 late this year. Yeah, um, we're, we're still very, <laughs> yeah. very early. We gotta do all those to revamps say. you asked right. Jay about. So we do the revamps you asked Jay about and then we get to new heroes. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something that we'll, we want to use the influence system for. So guys, remember, please ask questions in the comments. I'm sorry if I've been ignoring you so far. Uh, we're gonna answer those and finish these questions. So do you want to read the next one? Sure. 
Roth asks, are there going to be any progression after 25 plus other than gear? I was thinking an alternate advancement system like the one on EverQuest or a mega system for Marvel Heroes where you gain tiny stat upgrades. Um, there will be. I'm not sure how much uh, we're talking about yet. <laughs> but uh, there, there's some very early planning stuff on sort of alternate progression paths, different ways to make your character continue gaining power even after you hit your level cap. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, like I said before, obviously like we don't have all the levels in the game yet, right. so uh, there's that. Um, but then on top of that, and I don't know which order we'll add it in, we may even add in an alternate advancement system mm -hmm. before we get all the levels in, but there will definitely be something like that. Uh, we have a question from the comments, uh, which is a great question, which was asking... I need to find it again. Oh, man, it How do you read from that far away? Oh, so here we go. So will the two new... I have, good eyesight. I have to lean in a little bit. It's will the two new characters be DLC or not? So, uh, you know, the word DLC is like a really, really weird r word. And mm -hmm. like downloadable content, will, when we release them, you will have to download them. Yes. <laughs> so yes, uh, they will be something that you download since you have to download the whole game. Uh, uh, in terms of will they be paid or not, I don't think uh, that's something that we've quite figured out yeah. for Heroes yet. Um, we don't know how we want to do that, and that's something that we want your guys' opinions on. There's obviously two ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's multiple ways of doing it. There's the League way, which is you have a lot of heroes, which we're probably not going to have for right. ever or a very long time. Um, and then there's, you know, the Dota way, which is you get all the heroes and you buy mm -hmm. other costume-type stuff. And then there's other games which are a mixture of both. So yeah. I think that's something that we're going to be looking at and kind of uh, figuring out. So... Uh, let's see here. Uh, we'll take another question from the piece of paper. It says, does elemental damage influence critical damage too? Do you know the answer to that one? I have no idea. I don't know the answer to that one either. Do you know the answer to that one I passed by? That no, you don't that's, know the answer? That's a solid maybe so? from Team Trendy. That is, yeah, that is a solid maybe. All right, so maybe we should have. Uh, <laughs> Jay, Jay would have known the answer to that one, so if you guys ask him on the forum where Josh reminds him, uh, we will definitely make sure to answer that question for you. So let's see here, uh, the next question, uh, also from Aussie Mark. When you use an elemental weapon and it says 6,142 damage in white and let's say 150 in blue, is that 6,142 base damage and 150 elemental inclusive or exclusive? That is 6,142 base damage and 150 elemental damage on top of it. Okay, perfect. You got your answer to that question. Uh, Boshu asks, for daily missions, will we be starting to see new missions soon? as well as missions that can't be completed in just one dungeon. I don't know about soon, but yeah, in the it's, future. It's, it's stuff that's on the table. Um, that system's always going to be you know, under review. We're going to keep trying to add to it as we can. Um, obviously, this uh, sort of the rebalance, the foundation part two, <laughs> has been taking up a lot of our time recently. And um, just getting that system in at a base level was our priority then. And then we'll be returning to it and expanding mm -hmm. on it soon. Yeah. They want more questions about cats, which I have not seen one about cats yet. But um, uh, we did show off the cat pet oh. from, from last stream. So if All you guys right. didn't see it, watch the YouTube video from last stream. And uh, yeah, the cat I actually uh, saw that in the game today. It looks awesome, so it's really exciting. Uh, it follows you around. It's, it does, it's yeah. It bows its tail is really freaking cute. So. I like it. Um, so we also have a question from Bushy, which is, so I've been playing for many months and have put a lot of hours into this game. I have all four heroes to level 25 and geared with legendaries. I'm currently just farming the two new incursion levels. What can a player like me expect to see in the near future to keep me feeling like I am progressing? Well, um, <laughs> hard mode went into testing today, so uh, that'll be playable you know, start to finish if you want to raise up a fifth character. And mm -hmm. If you don't, the end game will be entirely playable um, on hard mode. So we'll be making sure to give you new challenges and making sure that you're rewarded for taking them on. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think it's really important, and I love that Bush, you kind of recognize this. Mm -hmm. There's lots of groups of players. Most of our players are not in that area. Right. So we are focusing on adding stuff that kind of still spans the whole game. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in early access, and I think everyone would be somewhat underwhelmed if we were like, oh, right. all the features and just add stuff on top of it. So yeah. you'll see that a lot of our focus right now is getting... You know, item enhancement better, mm -hmm. getting pets in, which spans the whole right. game, those sorts of things. And then we're going to, after we kind of flesh out the middle, start expanding on the top. We, we have to increase the breadth while we're, yep. while we're doing it. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, this, we have six more questions left. Uh, six right. is, 
Um, what should we expect the relic helmets to be able to spawn mods, special stats for blaze balloons, and explosive traps? Uh, I can't give you a time frame on that, but I will go uh, yell at Jay and Dan. Yeah, tell them to, to make, make that happen as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I cannot promise so, yeah, a time so, frame. Uh, when they decide to, so <laughs> hopefully sometime soon. Uh, we also have from K61824, which is, how is the progress of fixing item relics that are spawned with less mods, special stats than they should have been? I don't think that they're going to get fixed. I think that you have to yeah. find new ones. Uh, as far as I know, that's the case. Yeah. Um, so I think it was fixed in that they don't generate anymore. Right. So yeah, so unfortunately if you found one of those, uh, you'll have to play some more and find a better one. Uh, but you won't get one of those drops again. Uh, so we also have a question from Blade with a Y, X105, who asks, Love it. Can something be done about crowd surfing on enemies? Try playing a melee class and jumping into the fray in a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder crowded hallway. You can't attack properly, dodge attacks, or use some abilities while you float around on enemies' heads, and it really makes positioning a melee DPS difficult. I hope something can be done <laughs> about that soon. It's um, Especially on incursions when you start seeing yeah. just huge mobs of enemies that are that are just packed really dense. It's a really difficult thing to fix. Yeah, it, it's it, like a hallmark of DD1. That yeah. is like a feature. <laughs> crowd surfing. It's, it's fun. Unless you uh, unless you would like to be on the ground, and then it becomes quickly not fun. Yeah. So, so it's it's something that I hope we're able to do something about. Mm -hmm. um, it's like part of me thinks it would be really cool if like you kind of like if you landed on enemies, they like split apart and right. they land on the ground. That would cause bit, yeah, but that could but cause so many problems. Like all you mm -hmm. knock all the enemies off the side, and now people just are jumping. Yeah, you knock them to where <laughs> they can't find their way back. It's, yeah, it's so kind that's of a great question, uh, but obviously really challenging. So a uh, challenging one to answer. Uh, so number three, also from Blade with a Y X one five, which is, what are your thoughts on upgrading low DU defenses, specifically the Huntress's explosive traps? They are fairly weak and have a low initial cost to offset that. This leaves you with a twofold problem. Not only do you need four to five plus Huntress traps to cover a lane, but it now costs four to five times as much mana to upgrade that lane. Uh, and then they continue with the example. So what can be done to make traps worth placing and upgrading, or are they intended as utility like most other low DU defenses? Um. Well, they're intended to sort of supplement your choke points, supplement mm -hmm. your kill zones, stuff like that. Um, and actually, as of uh, two patches ago, maybe the last mm -hmm. patch, they've gotten a significant DPS buff. Um, so with a couple placed, um, I mean, you're still going to be stuck upgrading more than one, and, and that maybe not or might not be ideal. But uh, yeah, but they they do provide a significant DPS boost now. And if players are finding that that's not enough, you know, let yeah. us know. We'll, we'll, see, uh, we'll see about And I think that's something that long term, them. you know, may be something that needs another solution. So right. uh, something that maybe look at with the rebalances of the Right, yeah, for thing. sure. If, it, if it's still not up to stuff, let us know. We'll continue taking looks at it. So let's see. Uh, uh, will there ever be an increase in heroes in your deck uh, any time in the future? There may be. Uh, not right now. Right. But it's something that we constantly talk about. So Right now we have like three, three spots three, for four three, heroes. Yeah. And then... If that hero count goes up enough, maybe uh, yeah, maybe we do. So, two more questions. Oh, this is a great one to ask you. So, all right, what do you, what do you like and dislike about Dungeon Defenders Two? Okay, I like uh, as the monk pushing fools off of ledges. <laughs> that is the best yeah, feeling in this game. Um, I also I like, like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I second that. Like, it's really satisfying to see an ogre just fall off. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, what do I dislike? Uh, I don't think we use our airlines enough. I think we could do more with... Oh yeah, I agree. Well, um, I will say that I played uh, the boss fight today, and I kind of like yeah. the use there. Yeah, the use there, but I won't spoil it, but that was fun. That, that was might like, be why I'm like, thinking of it. I yeah. was like, man, what do I do to fight this? I've never seen this before. So, uh, yeah. Uh, any other likes and dislikes you want to share? I think we have... Like 50 seconds left. So 50 seconds left. One more like and dislike, and one then we'll more like the last dislike. question. Uh, oh no, I'm on the <laughs> spot. I like uh, I like being able to block stuff with the squire. <laughs> I like protecting my towers. I think well, it makes me a team player. <laughs> Perfect. And your your dislike, your one I more dislike. I dislike seeing a tower die. <laughs> it's not doing my job. Perfect. Okay, and so the last question is from Gutu, which is, uh, according to the Steam Shop info, there is no specific white plan on leaving early access. Is this set in stone, or is it something you'll think about later? 
uh, maybe ask a community or an influence vote. So I think your question is kind of a really odd one because mm -hmm. all of the answers could be yes. Um, there is no specific white plan to leave early access, and that's all we mean by that. So uh, if it's something that's widely requested or mm -hmm. something that's necessary because of a new feature that we add into the game, then it may be something that we do. So uh, you know, we constantly want to get feedback on that, and it's something that we have to figure out. So. Uh, that's it. That's all for the yeah. stream now. So thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you all next week. Thanks, guys.